Hey guys, back again. I want to talk more about this false gospel, this easy believism false gospel. And don't get it twisted because that's what it is. It is definitely a false gospel. And so that's the number one reason why we as Christians, as God's children, should, as you know, students of Scripture, we should be you know, concerned um, for this being taught. And, you know, and also, you know, it's just a lot of false teaching. Uh, it's twisting so many parables and so many things that Jesus said and Paul said. It's almost like a whole completely different Bible. And, you know, it just, it kind of surprises me that some people who I've talked to get really upset over these YouTube false teachers who, you know, talk about the end times and they're all about getting money and that's basically why they make videos and they, you know, they're into the occult and stuff. But when it comes to easy believism, it's kind of like, well, I don't really see that as a problem or whatever. No, this should be a big problem. Um, it is. And it is a false gospel. And a false gospel means that, you know, it prevents people from being saved or it gets people to believe that they're saved when they're truly not and it creates false converts. And, uh, you know, and some people say, well, the, the word of God doesn't return void. So these people who are preaching easy believism, they're still preaching that, you know, Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. They're, they're preaching the basic gospel, you know, that Paul mentioned in Corinthians and the word of God doesn't return void, so people are still getting saved. But yeah, but people are getting saved in spite of it. You know, that doesn't make it okay. People are getting in saved in spite of, you know, these false end times YouTube teachers, these occultists. People get saved in spite of, you know, sinless perfection teachers like Jesse Morrell. You know, he says that you have to be sinlessly perfect. But he does go out and say to believe on Jesus and to repent and that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. He, he preaches the basic gospel as well. But, you know, he also preaches a perversion of it, a sinless perfection, you know, a works-based salvation. And these easy believism teachers, they think that they're teaching faith alone, and they say that people who preach repentance are, are preaching some kind of works salvation. But they're the other extreme opposite from works salvation. You know, they're, they're preaching something that's not the gospel at all, that, you know, doesn't save... Um, <sighs> You know, it concerns me that these people like Stephen Anderson and all these independent fundamental Baptists that go out soul winning, they go door to door, and basically what they do is they get people to pray a prayer with them, and then they tell them that they're saved. And these people have no intention of, you know, submitting to Christ. You know, um, they really don't truly, you know, see themselves as needing to turn to Christ. Um, they don't see the wickedness of their sin. Um, but, you know, they create a lot of false converts. Stephen Anderson goes around one day and says that 600 people got saved or 2,000 people got saved. I've seen this firsthand, this this kind of teaching, this kind of false gospel. I've seen it um, firsthand with a couple people that I know. And I knew, you know, that they pretty much weren't saved after they told me they were. I was there when they supposedly accepted the gospel. They told me they did. And uh, I said, that's great, you know, but then I didn't really see a changed life. And here, a couple of years later, just a couple of months ago, I talked to one of them, and he says that he has nothing to do with religion anymore or anything like that. Okay? And, I, and he told me that he put his faith in Jesus, and he prayed this prayer in this church building. Okay? But it was false. It, he was manipulated into doing that, and he never truly uh, wanted Christ. He never truly got, you know, the full message. It's compromised. And something that's interesting, I was thinking a lot of thoughts of what I wanted to say, and I probably forgot a lot of things. But something that was interesting in the Hard to Believe book also, he talks about how Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And in most of these church buildings, they'll do something, you know, at the end of the service where they'll say, everybody bow their heads close your eyes, and if there's somebody who wants to put their faith in Jesus or whatever, raise your hand, you know, or look at me, and nobody else will know. And then we'll all say the sinner's prayer together. The whole congregation, people who are saved or not saved, will, you know, if you're saved, you'll say it again. And we're going to do everything that we can to make this person feel comfortable so they don't have to be ashamed, okay? Like Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but in these church buildings, they're like encouraging it, okay? Everybody can have their eyes closed. Nobody has to see you. You don't have to say it alone. You know,
know, this is manipulation. This is false. That's the false gospel of easy believism. Okay. Um, and I want to read some of this from this letter from my friend who's in jail. And I said that I wasn't really feeling good about this letter. I said, and I'm just going to read some of it just to show you some of this kind of easy believism thinking. Because the last book that I sent him was John MacArthur's Hard to Believe. And I got a copy of it for myself. And, you know, I read a little bit of it before I sent it to him. And I thought, and I found out it was really good. I already knew it was going to be good because of, you know, I know that John MacArthur is known for teaching good on Lordship Salvation. I've already seen some of his stuff on it. And somebody asked me, well, if you have John MacArthur on your false teacher's list, he's a Calvinist and everything, why would you even mention him? Well, when somebody's done a work on something that's really good, like he's one of the first people to come out and really refute easy believism and write these books on it. He's done a lot of work on it. And on this subject, he is really good, except for when he mixes in his Calvinism and stuff. Um, but, you know, when somebody's done a really good work, even though if they're false, um, I think it's, you know, it's notable. Um, but, you know, my intentions are to learn from it and to teach it myself, and eventually I won't mention John Carthur. Eventually I won't mis mention these people, okay? I'm just getting started. I'm saying, you know, it's a, it's a good resource. If you want to learn it, you do have to be cautious of the Calvinism and stuff in it. John MacArthur is a false teacher, probably not even saved, but he is very good at, at teaching Lordship Salvation, pointing these things out in the Scripture and refuting easy believism, okay? But anyways... So I wrote my friend in prison a while ago when he was there before for like a year. I wrote him a lot, sent him other books, sent him Bibles. And the last message that I got from him, he was talking about reading Rick Warren. And I felt like he really had this easy believism stance. And like I felt like he never really got converted. I never really got through to him. Uh, when I first started out sending him letters, I was kind of into the easy believism stuff myself. And so it does happen. Some people are confused about this or just ignorant, but I do believe that eventually uh, the Lord, you know, will turn them around. And anyways, so he was in jail again. And I sent him like a paper of David Cloud refuting uh, Rick Warren's book and stuff and showing all the dangers in it. And, you know, I was kind of hard on him because... I felt like, you know, he has not made that choice. And I'm kind of getting the same vibe again. I sent him the Hard to Believe book, and he really said that he really didn't like it and stuff. So here's some things that he said. He said, no amount of church fun or cool bands or uh, gnarly lights or pyrotechnics can change the message. I'm all for friendly, new, exciting, and fun ways to introduce people to the Lord, as long as you're conveying the truth. But that's the thing, it's it's compromising, bringing people in with all these things, and, you know, trying to make, dress up the gospel, so if there is no new way, okay, it's the old way, the only way to people, that people can get saved is the true gospel of Christ, okay, and these things, the music and lights and all that stuff's a diversion, okay, I mean, I don't even agree with the whole church building system anyways, I've told him that a lot too, and apparently he likes to hold on to that, um, you know, Easy believism is huge because of these church buildings, too. He also says, now maybe I haven't come across it yet, but nowhere have I read anything about having to be miserable and unhappy to be a true believer. Well, um, you know, I was trying to think about verses that would kind of refute that. Uh, you know, Christ does talk about we have to suffer for his name. And, you know, Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? So we are supposed to be unhappy with our, you know, present, unperfected self in a way. You know, we long to be glorified. We long to be with Christ, okay? Uh, we're supposed to be kind of unhappy to, you know, be in this corrupted world. Um, so John MacArthur doesn't say anywhere that you have to be miserable or unhappy to be a true believer. So he gets this message wrong. He's offended at the true gospel is what it is. And then he says, I'm thinking about starting a Christian record label or a promotion company. <laughs> and before he told me he was wanting to start like a ministry to help teenagers who are in the trouble and going into jail and stuff. And so he's got all these projects that he wants to do, but you know, what he needs to do is get converted. Have you ever heard of the four laws booklets? Well, that's interesting because one of the first things that I sent him in jail before was the four spiritual laws. So I already said that apparently forgot that. Some people, you know, are forgetful and forgetful about things. But like I said, when I first started out, I was into easy believism and stuff. And the four spiritual laws 
is straight easy believism. Okay, it's Jesus has a plan for you. Okay, Jesus wants you to be happy, basically. Okay, that's not the true gospel. So if you come across one, could you send it? One of the books I read said it's a good booklet for bringing people to Christ. Another book I'd really like, if you come across it, is Lifestyle Evangelism by Dr. Joseph Atkins. I don't know who Dr. Joseph Atkins, Atkins is. He's probably an easy believism teacher. I'll have to look into it in a little bit. But lifestyle evangelism, that, makes, that basically means trying to get people saved by living a, a good life, by, you know, always smiling and always doing the right thing. I mean, as saints, you know, we are supposed to live holy and um, follow, you know, follow Jesus in holiness. But, you know, the world kind of rejects that, too. Um, you know, if we say, you know, homosexuality is a sin or whatever, that is holy. That is following God. But the world rejects that. You know, they say you're intolerant. Um, no, you're a bigot. So lifestyle evangelism is this fake, easy believism, false gospel crap is what it is. And, you know, I don't see any change here. And it's unfortunate. You know, all I can do is pray for him now. And uh, somebody said, we're supposed to be the light of the world. Like, why would you quit writing him or whatever? Well, that I write it in to begin with, you know, to shed that light. But Jesus also says, you know, don't throw pearls to swine, dust off your feet. So people love to focus on one verse and ignore others. And uh, the easy believe is the false gospel. I'm afraid that my friend's into that. And I've tried to get him out of it count countless times. And, you know, the, the prison ministers who go into the jails and into the prisons, they preach the easy believism crap. Uh, you know, they don't preach the true gospel. They're just there to, you know, comfort people uh, in their sin or whatever. So it's hard when the whole system's against it. And then there are true believers, you know, who won't stand against it either. Okay, we need to stand against this crap. And say it for what it is. It's a false gospel, and the people who teach this stuff are false teachers. And yes, people might be getting saved in spite of them, but they need to be corrected. These people need to repent, okay? Um, the gospel is, it's hard, uh, it's hard to people to believe. It's, uh, you know, shameful. Um, people, you're going to get reproached for the gospel, Okay, if you haven't been reproached for it, if you haven't felt, you know, opposition from it, then you haven't been truly preaching the true gospel. Okay, you will uh, have family members upset at you. You will have friends. And I mean, you don't, you don't bash people over the head and stuff and get in arguments. And if you, you know, if you're living with somebody who's not saved or whatever, you're working with somebody who's not saved, you know, you can try it. And, and if not, you just kind of move on. But um, I don't know what I was going to say. You know, there's a point when we got to kind of move on, and we can just pray for the people at that point, but I don't know. Anyways, um, you know, that's what I feel like with this friend. I feel like now I've almost exhausted it, and I probably got ahead of myself trying to get him involved in things, but I thought, really, this time? And he might be. He might be close, and there's, there's still, you know, I don't know for sure. I just don't really like what I'm hearing and stuff, but I feel like if I tell him, I've told him over and over again some of these things, and uh, it doesn't seem to be getting through, but maybe it will. I'll keep praying. Prayer is, you know, more important than anything, almost. Uh, we have to make sure that we pray, and it's effective. God does answer prayer, so, you know, ultimately, it's going to be his choice to come to Christ, but uh, I hope that, you know, he gets in some situations or whatever where he'll do that, and I don't know, but easy believism is a false gospel, point blank, the gospel is hard to believe, it's hard for people to, you know, see themselves as wretched, wicked sinners, and, you know, I do want to look for verses now that kind of talk about being miserable for Christ, I mean, in some ways, yes, in some ways, no, but, the way that he's saying the way that he's saying it, I just think he's just offended by the gospel. Okay, um, you know we're comfortable, we have peace, and we are satisfied in other ways, in spiritual ways, in Christ. But yes, here on earth we are persecuted, we suffer, and uh, you know it's not an easy thing. 
So, um, and I was going to say that these easy believers and false teachers say the gospel is, it's so easy. It's easy to believe. Theirs is easy to believe because it's not the right one because it's not true. Okay. It's a cotton candy crap gospel that's going to rot people's teeth out and send them straight to hell. So let's get it straight guys. God bless.